Hey class, so for this first project, we are going to get our feet wet with ZBrush. So hopefully it'll get you used to navigating around the canvas, um, using the unique UI that comes with ZBrush, how to save your project in ZTool. We'll be adding reference images for the first time using Spotlight, creating a base mesh with ZSpheres, which is a pretty cool um, and unique tool to ZBrush. And then we'll also be learning about panel loops, which is a great way of adding hard surface details to your model. So um, let's get started. Hey class, so for our Z spheres exercise for our creature project, um, first thing I've just reopened ZBrush. I'm gonna press comma to get rid of the light box. I'm also going to go to document. You can see right now I have this gradient background for my document or canvas. I'm gonna change that by creating a new document. I'm gonna make sure auto fit window size is turned on. And that's just gonna make it to the full width of whatever my screen looks like. So if you typically have a tray open on either side, you can also do this as well. And it will auto fit to this smaller size. But I'm going to close that tray and just open up for the full document. I'm also going to get rid of this gradient background by going to Document and this range slider and just setting it to zero. I really don't like that kind of 80s look with the gradient, so um, that's the best way to get rid of it. Okay, now we're ready to start. We're gonna turn on or open our simple brush. And we're gonna select a Z-sphere. From here, we're gonna click, drag it, and I always hit Shift when I'm drawing on my canvas. And then I'm just gonna hit edit object and that's gonna bring up um, my window and my little head mannequin here so I can see where I am at, at in 3D space. The next thing I wanna do is import a reference image. So the way we do that is going to the texture menu. So texture has this thing called spotlight and to import a reference image into Spotlight, um, we're gonna first go to import, get the ZSpheres underscore reference image that I gave you in Blackboard. And then you gotta go back up to texture, select the image from all of the textures that are already preloaded. And now we wanna click this button on the right, which just says add to Spotlight. These other options are gonna turn on Spotlight or turn it off. But for right now, I just wanna um, add to Spotlight. And you can see instantly it creates this giant um, image on our screen. And what I'm gonna do, since this is my document size, I'm going to scale it using this radial menu. So there's a million different options here. The most important ones are rotate, scale, um, pin to spotlight, I sometimes use. Uh, there's opacity, which is the other one. Delete is important. Oh, regular opacity is here. There we go. So I'm just gonna turn that down so I can see more of my Z-sphere and less of my picture. If you wanna move your spotlight image around, you just kind of click on it anywhere and then scale is this option here. So I'm just gonna scale it so it's pretty big and fits in the center of my screen. And then once I'm happy with it, if you wanna move this little slider over, you can just click anywhere in the screen. Um, once you wanna get rid of that, you just press Z. Now before we go too much further, um, one important thing when you're using a spotlight projection image is to go to your brush menu and go to samples and you're going to want to turn off spotlight projection if you ever start using a sculpting brush like a standard brush um, like you would on a make poly mesh 3d sphere so let's i'm just going to show you a, if i have a poly mesh 3d sphere and i have a spotlight projection If you have a spotlight image active and you have not pressed or turned off spotlight projection, you can only sculpt where your image is. 
So you can see I can sculpt on this side, but on this side it does nothing and it doesn't tell me why nothing is happening. So a lot of times you'll have a spotlight image up on the side here and you'll be clicking away trying to affect your model and you just wonder what the heck is happening. So what's happening is that spotlight projection is on and unless you turn that off, um, you can't actually sculpt. Now the reason why this spotlight projection exists is to try and sculpt like a texture from an image like a dragon scale or a fish scale directly onto your model. So with the spotlight projection turned off, it's just doing a standard brush. But if I go back to brush and turn on spotlight projection and then just um, brush with my standard brush, it is projecting the texture in that image onto the sphere. So that's the purpose of spotlight projection, but it's also now used for reference images as well. So just um, keep that in mind you will definitely be turning on and turning off spotlight projection. Now this is one way of using a reference image. You can also add your reference images to your grid floors. So if you have a front side and back reference image, it's sometimes a lot easier to add them to the grids. And then um, Another way you can use a reference image is by using this see-through opacity. And this actually changes the entire window of ZBrush so you can see your um, desktop underneath. So some people will select use preview or what have you to put an image back there and then use the see-through window opacity. I'm not gonna do it right now because I have no idea what my background looks like right now, but um, just know that's an option too and it's right next to our quick save button, which is always handy. Okay, so Z-spheres are a really great way of creating base meshes for organic or even robotic um, creatures. So you'll use your draw, move, scale, and rotate shortcuts to quickly draw these Z-spheres. And once you've drawn one with the shortcut Q, then you can move that Z-sphere and um, ZBrush will create these like interim spheres connecting them and then you can scale using the shortcut E and then draw another Z-sphere um, and create quickly create arms and a base mesh for you know shapes like this. So you'll see in the next 10 minutes we'll be able to create a pretty good base mesh for this creature on which we can start sculpting or using um, panel loops for. All right, let's get started. So I'm first gonna scale down this Z-sphere so that it's about the size of the hips in my um, reference image here. So pressing E and then you're clicking and dragging an empty space up to make a Z-sphere smaller and then you click and drag down to make it um, larger. Next to draw my next sphere, I'm gonna kind of click around the top here, click and drag. And I'm trying to make the chest. So I drew this, it did kind of overlap the other one, but I'm gonna move this up. And that's a good, and that's a pretty good width. I'm, for the next spheres, I'm going to create the shoulders and then the head will be a separate piece. So, um, those will be next. I do want to turn on symmetry now for the shoulders. So to turn on symmetry, I'm going to press X and you'll see that there's a little circle on either side. So now when I click and drag, oh, I got to go back into draw. So Q to draw, click and drag. And it definitely looks a little weird for a little while, but press W to move and then just kind of click these over. I'm also going to go to my side view. You'll notice that this spotlight reference image doesn't actually change um, when you rotate your view. So it's not like um, in Maya where you have that reference image and it stays proportional. Like if I zoom out right now, this will um, make my model smaller or larger while also keeping the reference image the same size. There are ways to set the camera in the timeline. Um, 
but that's something we can worry about later. Let's just keep going. So I'm just gonna move this shoulder, the body forward a little bit, and then place the shoulder as well, because we wanna have our front and side views to work. So I'll press this little blue circle to get my front view back and keep going. And just move these, there we go. And what I'm looking for is just the proportions. So now I'm gonna draw the head. So for that, I'm just gonna press, go back to draw, so Q. And I'm gonna press X again just to turn off symmetry because I don't really need it and just kind of draw the head right now. Okay, so we've got the head and now I'm gonna turn back on symmetry by pressing X and draw the arms to the elbows. So just click and drag and then move these down to the elbows. And you can see the Z spheres fill in any um, extra spheres that are needed. Just gonna scale this down a little bit. So moving your mouse up and down changes the size. I'm just gonna move this down, okay. Draw again with Q, so click and drag. Move it with W, so Let's draw again. There we go. Move these spheres all the way down. Because when you scale, you need to drag down to make them larger. Sometimes it can help if you actually just move them, you know, halfway up here and then scale and click and drag. So they have to click and drag, click and drag again until you can make them large enough and then move them back into place. So that's one strategy. Alternately, if you want to go back in time, so this is the undo history timeline. I'm just gonna click and go back in time a little bit until they're large. Um, to move the model in your screen, you're gonna do press Alt, click and drag so that it's higher up. And then you can just scale as well without having to um, move out of place. But then you need to Alt, click an empty space and drag to move your model back into place with the reference image. And remember the tricky one is zoom. So to zoom, you press alt, click an empty space, let go of alt and then start dragging. I'm just gonna scale these up. What I think the strength of this model is, is the proportions. So having kind of these really dramatic proportion changes, I think are really fun. So um, don't be afraid to scale these out. Okay, so this is looking pretty good from the front view, but I also wanna make sure my side view looks good as well. So I'm just going to click to the side, click on my model and move these arms, I think forward a bit. And maybe move this head a little more forward and back a little more forward. There we go. Cool. Okay, and now we wanna keep drawing. Um, here I'm gonna do one extra segment for the hips and then start drawing that leg. So turn off symmetry, it's X. And then I press Q to draw. Click and drag for the hip part. W to move. So move these where the hips are and then E to scale, make this larger by dragging it down. Okay, turn on symmetry again, X, and then start to draw for the hips. Press W to move them again, E to scale, drag down to make them larger. These parts look a little weird right now, but I think they'll look make a lot more sense in a minute. Okay, now for the legs, I'm going to draw again, or for the knees, click and drag, W to move, E to scale, make these bigger. Really could add a, a Z sphere in the middle here. So if you wanna click and drag in the middle of one of these chains, 
um, you can do that too. And I'm just going to scale this up because the legs seem to go from thinner to thicker thighs and then thin at the knees again. Click on the scale and make these smaller. And this extra Z spear, once we take it into like the skinning mode, um, we'll be able to kind of combine these and it'll look a lot more natural. But for right now, I just want to get that volume. Okay, click on these. I'm going to make them a little smaller. And then our last, well, maybe last for the legs. Move these down. Oh, oh. I literally just want this one. I don't want this one. That's okay. I'm just going to go back. I don't know why that did that. Draw one more time. Move. There we go. And then scale. Now we can see if we press Z for our spotlight and scale our spotlight down, also kind of look at how this body was looking from the side. Here's where we can, I believe, flip our model around. There we go. So I don't think these models are exactly the same. They're just kind of concept art, but I do kind of like what this is doing where the knee is very far forward. So I'm just going to go back into uh, do not switch. So we want to stay in 3D mode. If you try and turn off edit, it will try and switch you back into 2.5D mode, which we do not want. So let's just hit do not switch. Um, you have to press Z to get rid of uh, spotlight mode. And I'm just going to nope. try and move these knees very far forward. You don't have to do this for yours. It's kind of up to you what how you want this to look. And then I could even draw one more coming off the back here. Oh. Turn off X. Move this a little back, scale it. There we go. Like this one. It's a little weird. That's better. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add some feet sticking out the front here. Every time I do this, I actually practiced a demo model of this before and um, Every time I do it, it turns out slightly different. I, I'll definitely show you the one I did before this too, just to show you all the different variations and there is no right or wrong, just come up with something cool. All right, and the reason I like this concept art is just because it has such exaggerated proportions. All right, so that's it for this particular mo Z-Sphere model. What I want you to do is save your projects so do file and save as, or you can save your Z sphere as a Z tool. So I'm going to do that. Save as. Let's call this model one. And I want you to come up with two more Z sphere models on your own and just play around with some of the exaggerated proportions. And I'll show you some concepts in class. Um, to start a new Z-Sphere, you're just going to click over here. Note that your other Z-Sphere model does not disappear. It's, it's still in this project. So as long as you do file and save as, you'll save all your Z-Sphere models together. If you'd like to turn off your spotlight image, go to texture and you can turn it off. Or you can import a new image and then just add it to spotlight here and make sure you turn it on. So. Um, if you have multiple ones in view, you can click the one that you're not using and then press delete and then you can go back and use the new one. So ho hopefully you'll have lots of fun with this exercise. Good luck.